This is Katherine Nightingale from Chattanooga State Community College, and this video is for Linear Algebra Section 3.1, which is an introduction to determinants. Let's start by defining a determinant. A determinant is basically just a number assigned to a square array of numbers in a certain way. So first thing to notice here is that it has to be square. If it's not a square matrix, then no determinant exists. The notation is written as DETA or parallel bra um, brackets with the A inside, your matrix inside. So for example, you could have this uh, straight brackets with 3, 4, negative 1, 2. That would mean take the determinant of the matrix, 3, 4, negative 1, 2. Or you could write DET and then your regular matrix brackets with 3, 4, negative 1, 2. For a 1 by 1 matrix um, with just one entry, the determinant is equal to that entry. For a 2 by 2 matrix, we talked about this a little bit when we were taking inverses. So you've already seen it. The determinant is AD minus BC. So for example, if we take the determinant of 3, 4, negative 1, 2, we'll cross forwards diagonal minus backwards diagonal. So 3 times 2 minus 4 times negative 1, and we would get the determinant um, 6 plus 4, which is 10. Okay, for a 3 by 3 and larger matrix, we have to use something called cofactor expansion. You can expand across any row or down any column. And the signs alternate depending on position. And for entry A, I, J, so remember that means ith row, jth column. If I plus J is even, then you use a positive, which just means keep the sign of the entry. If I plus J is odd, then you use a negative, which means change the sign of the entry. You always start with a positive in the upper left corner and alternate outward from there to get your alternating signs. So before we go into the formal definition of cofactor expansion, I'd like to work through one example. So we have this matrix. We have our 3, negative 2, 0, 4, 3, 1, 1, 0, 4, and we want to take the determinant. A tip is to always pick the row or column that has the most zeros. So the most zeros. You'll see why um, as we start to work through how to find the determinant. It makes your calculation much shorter if you have some zeros that you don't have to worry about. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick row 1 since it has a zero in it. And I'm going to write down my alternating signs. Remember the upper left corner is always a plus, so it's plus minus plus. And then I'm going to focus on that first entry, the 3. Okay, so I have the determinant of A is equal to, and I have my 3. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out the column and the row that the 3 are in and focus on the determinant of the remaining part, the 3, 1, 0, 4. So I'll put, put it in my determinant brackets. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the negative 2. So I'm moving on to the next entry, and it's a subtraction, so it's minus negative 2. Now I cancel out the column and the row that that entry is in and focus on the remaining part. So now I'll have the minus negative 2 times the determinant of 4, 1, 1, 4. Okay, now you may have guessed already. We're going to go 
onto that third entry, the zero, and we're thinking, yay, zero times anything is zero. So I'm not even going to have to worry about it, but let's go through the process anyways. So we cross out the column and the row, focus on the remaining matrix, and now we, we're down to two by two matrices, so we know how to do those determinants. We've done them before. So I'm just going to start working through it. Three times, three times four minus one times zero. Remember we go down the forwards diagonal minus the backwards diagonal. Now that minus negative two is a plus two. And I'm going to do the determinant of the four, one, one, four. And then the zero I'm not going to worry about. It's just a plus zero. Okay, now I'm going to do the calculation. So 3 times 12 plus 2 times 15 gives me my determinant of 66. So the overall determinant of that 3 by 3 matrix is 66. So you always are going to work through that way where you with the cofactor expansion where you do the alternating signs and you just focus on each entry one at a time, cross out the row and column that it's in, and focus on the remaining matrix. If you have a larger matrix, you'll have to work your way down. So if you had a 4x4, four four, you would work it down so you had 3x3s, three and then you'd have to work each of those 3x3s three down until you had 2 by 2s because we have that nice formula for finding the determinant of a 2 by 2. Okay, here is the formal definition of cofactor expansion. So the ij cofactor, that's row i column j, is um, defined to be a capital C sub ij equals negative 1 to the i plus j times the determinant of aij, where aij is the matrix obtained by removing the ith row and jth column of a. So that's what we were doing in the last one, was we were crossing out the row and the column that the entry was in and just focusing on the remaining matrix. So then our theorem 1 says that if you expand across the ith row, then you have this formula for your determinant of A, where you do your cofactor expansion across the row. And for the jth column, you'll just be doing the same thing but down the column. So whatever entry it is, times the appropriate sign because of that negative 1 to the i plus j, times the remaining matrix when you cross out the row and column. Okay, that's the formal definition. Hopefully having seen the example before the formal definition makes the definition a little more clear. Okay, so let's do a practice problem. If you um, feel like it, please pause the video and try this one out. You want to pick a row or column with the most zeros, so there's a couple options for this one. So go ahead and pause, and when you're ready to check your answer, go ahead and come back to the video, and we'll work it through together. Okay, hopefully you tried it on your own. Um, what I'm going to use is the second row. You should get the exact same answer if you used that third column because the third column has two zeros also, so it would be equally um, simple as the second row. But you should come out with the same answer in the end. Okay, so I'm going to do my alternating signs. I start with a plus in the upper left and then alternate out from there. So along my row, row two, I have minus, plus, minus, plus. Okay, I'm going to do first entry, so I'm going to do minus 1, and then I cross out the row and column that it's in, focus on the remaining matrix, and write that matrix down, multiplied by the negative 1. All right.
Okay, now, second and third entries in the row are zeros, so I'm just going to ignore those because I know that anything times zero is zero. So now I have a plus negative one. So I write that down, plus negative one, cross out the row and column that it's in, focus on the remaining matrix, and go ahead and write down that matrix. All right, now I have to expand further because I, I have three by threes. I'm not down to the two by two yet. So I'm gonna focus on this first one underlined in black here. And that negative one um, scalar is just gonna have to come along the entire way. So it's just gonna stay on the outside of my brackets as I work through the determinant of that three by three matrix. Okay, I'm going to pick column 2. It would have been equally easy to pick row 2 because either one has a 0 in it. I'll get my alternating signs. Always start with a plus in the upper left and then alternate from there. So in my column, I have negative, positive, negative. So I'm going to drop down that coefficient first, the negative 1. And now I'll focus on that negative 3 entry. And if I cancel out row 1 and column 2, I get 2, 0, 3, 2 as my remaining. Plus 2. And then if I canceled out row 2 and column 2, I would have remaining negative 14, 1, 3, 2. And then the zero I don't have to worry about, so I'll just write minus zero. Now I want to focus on the second matrix underlined in black. I'm going to drop down the negative one because I have to keep track of my scalars. And I'm going to go ahead and use row three. Get my alternating signs, plus, minus, plus. So I'll have negative 1, and if I canceled out row 3 and column 1, I would have the remaining matrix negative 14, 3, 2, 2. And then negative 3, or minus 3, cancel out row 3, column 2, and use the remaining matrix. And then the 0, just a plus 0. Okay, I'm going to transfer this to a new slide. Here it is. Okay, so this is just exactly what was written on the previous slide. Now we're down to two by twos, so we can work it out. So I'm just going to go um, negative one, work out the determinant, forwards diagonal minus backwards diagonal, two times two minus zero times three, plus two, determinant forwards minus backwards. 14 times 2 minus 1 times 3. Now I bring down my negative 1 from my second 3 by 3 matrix. And then forwards minus backwards. Negative 14 times 2 minus 3 times 2 minus 3. And then 2 times 2 minus 3 times 3. All right, we're almost there. Just do the calculation. That becomes negative 1 times the quantity negative 3 times 4 plus 2 times negative 31. Be very careful with signs. It's easy to make a, a mistake somewhere in the process. So just make sure you're double checking your work all the time. I have my second set of numbers. So that becomes 74 minus 49, which gives us a determinant of 25. Perfect. So that is the determinant. Because we kept track of all of our coefficients and we kept track of everything as we went, that's our final determinant of that 4 by 4 matrix that we started with. So that is our final answer for the 4 by 4 matrix. In your calculator, you should have a 
um, function called DET under your matrix menu and that will work for um, checking your answer with the calculator. Okay, here's a quick shortcut. I know this isn't in the notes, but a quick shortcut for a 3x3 three three determinant. I'm going to um, go ahead and use for an example the one, the second 3x3 three three that we got when we did our cofactor expansion from that 4x4 four four matrix. Okay, so for the 3x3 three three determinant, what you do is you write column 1 and column 2 off to the right of your matrix. And then what you're going to do is you take all the forwards diagonals, those are all going to be positives. You take all your backwards diagonals, those are all going to be subtracted. And then you just multiply down the diagonals. So in the example that we have, I'm going to rewrite column 1, rewrite column 2. I identify all of my forwards diagonals and just multiply 2 times 2 times 0 plus negative 14 times 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 3 times 3. So those are all pluses. Now backwards diagonal. I'm going to do minus. So minus 3 times 2 times negative 1 minus 2 times 2 times 3 and minus negative 14 times 3 times 0. And now you just work it out. It's an algebra problem from here. So we get 49 which, if you look back um, at the um, earlier in the video, remember we got 74 minus 49. 49 was the determinant of that second 3x3 three three matrix. So there's a little shortcut anytime you have a 3x3. Three three. Okay. One more thing to speed up the determinant process. Theorem 2, if A is a triangular matrix, which means it has all zeros either above or below the diagonal, then determinant of A is the product of the entries on the main diagonal. So th these are really nice. This one's triangular. It has the zeros below the diagonal. So the determinant is going to be the diagonal. 3 times 4 times negative 2. So I get negative 24. Pretty simple when they're triangular matrices. If you did cofactor expansion, you would get exactly the same answer. Okay, try this one out. Pause the video, and when you come back, we'll work through it together. Okay. Hopefully you paused and tried it out, but we have a triangular matrix, again, zeros above the diagonal this time. So my determinant is going to be the product of the main diagonal, negative 1 times 9 times 3 times negative 1, which gives me 27. All right, so that's all there is to determinants. You have cofactor expansion, and you do that until you get down to 2 by 2s, and then you use your AD minus BC for the 2 by 2. You have the shortcut for the 3 by 3, and you have the shortcut for triangular matrices. We can discuss more in class if you have any questions.